On the football filling today, we have got the return of Mark Goldbridge, fresh from those Alejandro Garnacho liked tweets. The Premier League title race unfortunately seems like it's over. It is now all in Manchester City's hands after Liverpool and Arsenal both lost at the weekend. Eric Ten Hag, could the Brighton be on the wall after he stormed out of his press conference? Alexander Isaac, is he worth 100 million quid? And we break down that world class Emmy Martinez save with the main man himself, Dave Watson. It's a football player. Right, boys, lovely to see you. Uh, good weekend, Watto? Amazing weekend, mate. Afternoon in Birmingham, oh. and I saw a photo of a young Ben Foster in a restaurant. I took a little selfie. We can get it up later. He, uh, you sent it me as well. It was a young, beardless Foster, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, young. Horrible, mate. Horrible. <laughs> Underneath this beard, right, it's a massive chin, and that's why I've got a beard, because it covers it, it does. I saw a picture of myself, actually, 10 years ago on, uh, the other day. It looks all right, twat. Clean shaven. It's funny how I think we look better as we get older. Can you send me that picture as well then? We'll put these pictures on screen. Um, Mine's terrible. Did, get did you have a good weekend? No. It was... Um, Footballing-wise, it was an absolute joke. Man United were absolutely... Even said rubbish. lost. It was, a, it was a bad weekend on the football front. However, you've caused a little bit of controversy this weekend, haven't you? Somebody liking your tweets. AG17. AG17. Yeah. The joke's on everyone else, though, because what they don't realise is I'm the admin. <laughs> liking my own tweets <laughs> um, I like it um, right come on we've got to start with Liverpool lads um, you know we, we all we all thought this was going so swimmingly well didn't we we're all looking forward to the end of the season it's the closest title race we've had in years and then all of a sudden this comes along Liverpool at home to Crystal Palace surely it's a guaranteed win they go and lose 1-0 I think it's been coming all season and it's such a shame I, I mean I just one of them to win this weekend and I don't want City to win the league I bloody hate them but I think with Liverpool, it's sort of been coming. Um, I can only speak from sort of a United point of view that we been, we went to Anfield, they had about 100 shots, yeah. draw. Yeah. They came to Old Trafford, should have won, draw. Should have beat us in the cup, we're, we're, we're in the semi-final. Sheffield United a couple of weeks ago at Anfield, I think it was, or whether it, was it Bournemouth, maybe both, they needed a late goal to win. They're creating so many chances uh, but any Liverpool fan is going to be screaming it at the screen. They, they're just not putting the ball in the back of the net. And it's and it's hurt them, hasn't it? Did you watch this, did you? Because I, did watch I, was, I, I just could not believe Liverpool were not hitting the back of the net. It just seemed relentless. Barrage, barrage, ball. F it's not like Henderson even had many saves to make, did it? No. It's just that they were just missing absolutely everything. Well, I thought, like, Palace... Uh, certainly, first half deserved to be in front. I yeah. mean, they played some Did really nice. Well. They stuff. had a couple of chances and couple of big chances yeah, themselves couple of big chances. for sure. And they deservedly probably one nil up. But Liverpool had still missed chances. But I think second half, especially when you go into the cop, you felt the ball were going to go in there. And Henderson made one big save when Nunes uh, swung at it from the corner. Mm. But then they got block after block after yeah. block. So we weren't making loads of saves. Um, and then Allison made a. Uh, an incredible stop near the end when he just gets his Did big you see this right hand on Did it. Did you see this? Oh, oh it, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's reminiscent, right, of Jersey Dudek in the Liverpool final um, against AC Milan. Oh, isn't it? It's completely reminiscent of that. He is two yards out, two yards out, right? And he just, this is the difference between a very top class goalkeeper, right? That he just, he, at that moment in time, the only thing you can do is just go like that and. Try and make yourself somewhere something. And it hits his hand, strong hand, and it just goes over the bar. And I'm watching it going, that is, like, that's incredible. Yeah, but it's I, incredible. I just think it showed the way of the game because Robinson clears, Robertson clears one off the line, doesn't he? I mean, yeah. it was a good finish because Alisson's normally really good in the 1v1 yeah. situations. He clears it off the line. And you're thinking then, they're going to go on and yeah. they're going to take a chance. But... As I said, the blocks, the bodies on the line. And, Curtis Jones and had a big chance, one on one. He always, wide. He when he pushed that, it, when he he pushed that wide. Seller, yeah. Yeah. But I, th I think with Liverpool, um, I think it just comes down to probably two things, really. One, uh, I was uh, listening this morning, apparently the 14 games in the Premier League, they've gone 1 0 down. Wow. So th you're always going to That's get, not sustainable. You're, you're always going to get a chance. Yeah. And then you look at the Atalanta game, I mean, they're probably out of Europe now, 3 0, 70% possession, yeah. loads of shots. Same with Palace. Palace deserve one or two goals. Liverpool should score three or four. Yeah. And the same thing should have happened at Old Trafford. Same thing should have happened at Atalanta. And it's caught up with them. You know, at this stage of the season, goals are harder to come by, aren't they? It does go a little bit. Yeah. And um, I think they've just... I think Liverpool have had a fantastic season. And I think the Klopp thing has probably clouded people's view that there's going to be this fantasy end 
But actually, when you look at that team, it's not Sadio Mane, Firmino and Salah. It's not Fabinho, Henderson, everyone. It's not actually finished yet. Yeah. I think he's tried to fast track it because he knows he's going. And I think they fell short. But I still think it's a really good season for Liverpool. And I don't know what it's like actually playing the game. But I know Klopp said he was disappointed at the end. But you've had all those chances. What what more can you really say other than you should be finishing? It's not like they're not yeah, creating yeah, chances. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just so frustrating. They're battering teams. Yeah. They're just not putting the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. The, the, the most Salah chance at the end was the big one for me. Ooh. I cannot believe he has got across to clear that. Mm. I've, I, I can't believe. Oh, you can just see the net bulging, can't you? It looks like it's like a tap in, and then out of nowhere the ball. Well, gets... you see Salah's I'm... face. I don't think he can believe. I know. It. If the goalie saves it, then you think fair dues, but he didn't see him there. No, I know. But, and that's I think they got two or three massive blocks on it, but. I just think the 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 fallen short a little bit. Klopp saying he's finishing. You don't know what the cumulative effect is yeah, in, sure. in the mentality has been. Um, but I think for a team that's really trying to win it, they're too open now. They're giving too many away. Yeah. And when you talk about the stats conceding first and that, you're not going to win the league like that. This, yeah, this time of season, you can't be conceding first as well. It's mentally going to hurt you, isn't it? Um, I'm going to put it out there. Brave statement from me. I don't think Liverpool are out of the Europa League yet. I still no, I don't. I, I think they've got a comeback in them. I can see them. Mass, that's, that's their game. I can this see is them Klopp's winning that four 0 five 0 I really can. I, I, I said this at the weekend. I think they'll win it because I think it's Klopp's legacy. Dublin final, last game in Europe. If they, they go out on Thursday, potless. Yeah. I mean, I know they won the Carabao Cup, so if they get an early. They, you know what Italian teams are like. They're gonna sit. And if you sit, it's hard to go attacking if Liverpool score. I'm, I'm going to get back on it. I'm going to get back, Jamie. Get some odds on the screen, or screen, all right. Um, right, let's talk about the other team in the title race, Arsenal. Um, so this one, paint the picture for it. Arsenal afternoon kickoff. They've just watched Liverpool drop points. Surely this is a massive opportunity them to steal a march on everybody else. Um, and I saw this one coming, lads. I did. I saw this. Yeah. One coming. I, I... Chances after chances yet again. Couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. And they go and get stung. At yeah, them. I mean, I, I watched the first half, then I went and watched um, Ethan's football match, and then I came back and, and watched it uh, afterwards. But I'd seen the score, and I wasn't surprised. I mean, they started pretty well, <clears> but didn't create massive chances. Yeah. Havertz had one chance, Martinez, uh, comfortable save. Then he makes a massive save. Massive save. Massive save what with his it? right foot. And then Watkins, it's the post, yeah. and you're thinking nil nil half time. But I think. It was the one team I don't think Arsenal wanted to play this weekend. Emery, old manager, he's done the double over them. Yeah. Um, and he set he set his team up great. And Arsenal are not killers, are they? Nope. If you think about the league, we, we, what we talk about now, everybody's talking about Tony at Brentford and Watkins. He probably gets into Liverpool or Arsenal and the game's different. Yeah. They're goal scorers. Yeah. I kept saying, I kept saying to Louis, we were watching. My son's an Arsenal fan, and I, every time Arsenal had a chance, and they had lots of them in that first half, they really did. I know, I know, Watkins hit the post, and but they had so many chances. Saka had a good chance that just takes a bad touch, puts it into the side post. Havertz had chances. Jesus, and I, I said to him, I said, mate, if Arsenal had Harry Kane up front, if they had a Harry Kane-like player, a clinical killer, somebody that would take those chances and put them into the back of the net. They'd be 3 nil up here at half-time. And he was like, yeah, I totally agree. And that is Arsenal's problem, isn't it? Probably similar to what Liverpool a little bit. But Arsenal, it's so glaring. They haven't got that guy that will just clinically put the ball in the back of the net. Look, you know what? I think this league, if you take Man City out of it, we'd be, all, we'd be sat here so excited saying, mm. my God, this title race. Unfortunately, you've got a team in this league that 115 reasons maybe, but 10 years of you know building a dominance and a squad that is way better than everyone else. Mm. And you look at Arsenal, and I know everyone's going mad and some Arsenal fans are going mad, but the bottom line is they need a striker, they, they need another midfielder, yeah. and they need a left-back. And Man City don't need any of them things. No. They, and, and that's the shortfall. I think you look at that game yesterday, Arsenal have got to score first, and they've got to score in the first half. And I thought they played some good football up until the final third. There was a brilliant phase of play where I think it went through Odegaard and Rice, and it went to the right, and it might have been the Trozard chance, it might have been another chance, but... They just didn't put the ball in the back of the net. And Villa always looked like they were more clinical. I mean, he's at the inside of the post, Watkins. Tillemans is at the bar in the post. And and in the second half, I mean, if, the one thing I would say is, Emery said after the game he didn't tactically tweak it. So what? where did Arsenal go in the second half? Because they it was Villa 
all the way through. Yeah. And I think the big thing was when they took Odegaard off with 11 minutes to go, it's nil-nil. But I don't think they were going to win it anyway. No chance. We've got, to, we've got to give a shout out to Villa. There's no surprise that they, are, that they are where they are in the league because you could tell that if they got half a chance, that I mean, that Ollie Watkins chance at the end of the first half, it's a warning of what's to come. You know that if you give him that chance, and his goal was fantastic, by the way. I thought the defending was absolutely brutal. I know it's Emil smith Rowe. It's not renowned for his defending, but... When you've got Ollie Watkins running on an angle on his right foot, I'm thinking, just please, just get across the front of him. Just do all you can to get put across. Try and put him off a little bit. And it's almost like he was just, he didn't really know what to do. Ollie Watkins, too strong, too clever in that position. Puts a ball in the back of the net. Game over. But massive shout out to them because they've been incredible this season as well, haven't they? Yeah, I, th I think they'll get fourth as well. And I think they deserve it. Um, I think they'll win that European trophy. And I think if, if Villa win the Conference League and get Champions League football, I mean... You're not far off a statue at Villa Park for Emery, are you? It's, yeah. it's incredible, really. Damn right as well. Before we move on to uh, to your boys, Man United, can we just talk about that Emmy Martinez save, please? Um, oh. and, and it's a world class save, isn't it? As simple world, as that. World class save, and it's a save that's become the modern way. It's the foot self type save, but he's not overcomplicated the save. He's in a reasonable position at the near post. He's anticipated that he can't get across to cut the cross out, yeah. so he spins on his left heel, gets across. And obviously the flexibility, the reaction, and the right leg, the right toe comes out. And yeah, you can argue that they finish anywhere else. But these goalies now, the frame, the size of them, but it's the quickness to get that position, to make that save. Yeah. And I think he could play, certainly, for any team in, in the, the world. world. In the world. Martin Simple is. as that. Obviously, we know he's won the yeah. World Cup. But if you talk about when we come on to your team next, they need a goalie like that to get to the level they're at because... Um, ultimately, Alisson does it for Liverpool. Um, Raya has done really well for Arsenal, but I'm not sure he's got a big moment like Alisson or Matt, isn't it? Martinez in him. Yeah. They, and, and that, at some point, yeah, I know he's great and the play between the lines, but to win it all and do it all, you've, you've got, got to make one. that save as well. Yeah, I think just talking about the save, the mechanics of it are fantastic, how quick and how agile and... All of that is brilliant, but it's the it's the smarts of it. It's the cleverness of of seeing the ball getting pulled back, reading that situation, using his peripheral vision to see that Trossard is coming in there, seeing him there and just knowing that because he's rolled it across the floor, there's no point going with your hands because you'll just get done underneath. It's you've got to literally open up, stick your leg out as wide as you can. Hopefully it can hit you. And he has probably a very tiny split second to actually manoeuvre his foot into a position to open it up and clear the ball. It's world-class. Horrific miss. It, it, it's not a horrific miss. Well, it's it, a world-class save. It's a world-class save. He should be burying it. Miss. He should be burying it, but as a He's goalkeeper, got the time to go the other you corner. can only save what you oh, yeah, can 100%. save. If he puts it in the far but, corner, but, but, you know you've got no but chance. But surely you both agree with me on that. As a goalkeeper, a world-class save is always probably a horrific miss. Because mm. Well, I think mm. the one thing I'd say... Look, a lot we, of the time it would, would I, be. We know it's a big goal. And eight yards wide yeah, is yeah, a big yeah. goal. So you think you've got a big target. But for me, he makes the save because he doesn't try and cut the cross out because yeah. he knows he can't get it. Yeah. He's in a good position, not too tight to that near post. And he can't cover eight yards. It is impossible. Mm. So you can argue about the miss. But what he does is, if it, if you put it in my four or five yard goal, mm. I'm saving yeah, it. Vibe. And that's the difference at and, the level. He's and that gets into the striker's head then because he thinks, well, I have to put it in that three-yard goal in the end there, which takes a lot more skill. I've got no time to react, so I'm just going to have to get as much of a contact on it as I can. That's the difference a world-class goal he makes, all right? I love it. It's good chat, though, boys. It is really good chat. I love it. it. Um, <laughs> what a save. Yeah, what a save. Uh, right, your boys and Mark. Man United, another disappointing result. Two yep. all. Um, a lot kicking off of this game, actually. A lot kicking off. Um, I didn't actually get to watch the game. I was travelling down to London, like I said. Um, but somebody I was with was a big Manchester United fan. And he was showing me the goals, the second goal in particular for me. I'm just watching it thinking, what on earth? Like, Casemiro, mate, that is so symptomatic of Man United this season, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you don't need to watch the game because it's the same old story. It's a bit of a basketball game where it's end-to-end -end and there's no midfield from Man United. Um, we didn't really actually create much in the game, really. I mean, I think Rasmus Hoyland's had one shot in four games which for a striker at any level yeah. is just disgusting. And uh, there are certain United fans getting on at him, but for me, it's the same thing that Haaland had a couple of weeks ago against Arsenal. People slag him off. He's not getting any service. As a striker, you need that. Uh, Bournemouth should have won it. Uh, if, I, I, if I was a Bournemouth fan, I'd, I'd be like, why didn't we win that game? Yeah. Considering 
I don't think it was a penalty. At the end? No, for, oh, no, no, the handball. No, I don't think it's a penalty at all. Wow. I'm surprised Bournemouth <laughs> didn't go oh mad. What's going on with football? It's sitting there. Like, well, it's a deflection onto his shoulder. Of I mean, I'll take it. I'll what, take what's it. What's going on with football? I was actually yeah. surprised the ref give it. Because yeah, me too. I think everybody was so surprised. And, oh, shit, he's given a penalty. But, like, they never asked him to review. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you, I mean, do, you know so sorry, do you know what a sorry state we're in at the minute as well is? The, obviously, it hits his shoulder it, off of the deflection. But Harry Maguire is stood just outside the box, right? And the second it hits his shoulder, his arms go up in the air and he's demonstrating to the referee, he's pointing his hand. And I'm thinking, what on earth? Like, that's where we are now, where we know there's a chance that that could get given as a penalty. So you have to claim for everything. Oh, yeah. It's, well, it's Man, so Man City have been brilliant at this for years. They, they, they sort of coordinated. Four of them run to each corner of the thing, four of them run at the referee. And it, and it clearly works because I was like, that's not. You know, I was like, it won't get overruled because the no. ref on the oh. pitch has given it, yeah. so he's going to get given. But God knows what that was all about. We were we were probably quite fortunate to get a draw. Um, and it wasn't a penalty at the end; it was just outside the box, but yeah, just wide open in the midfield. I felt for the lad at the back, um, Campuala. He's he's at fault for both goals yeah. as well as others. But you know, when you when you've got four centre backs out, that's going to happen. But the big thing for me was just Ten Hag. I, I don't believe sacking the manager is the way to go, but watching the game on Saturday, he's either doing it on purpose or, you know, I, I don't, or he's given up because, you know, Rashford shouldn't have started for me, played 90 minutes. Casemiro shouldn't have started, played 90 minutes. 78th minute, he only makes his second sub. Bournemouth have made four or five. Yeah. And I'm like, at what point do you watch that as a manager and go, I don't need to make subs. It's I don't fine. Need, I don't need fine. to take Casemiro yeah. off. And you're like, you're going, and that's the problem with United fans at the moment. They're looking at it and going, we don't want to sack another manager, but what the hell is he doing? Some, I think something has happened because it's like all of a sudden he's lost his cool. I yeah. agree with you. Not making a substitution until it's, that's criminal. With the way the game was going, and I've seen the yeah, higher, fresh legs the, the effort that some of the players were putting in is criminal. And then the, obviously the the press conference at the end, storming mm. out after it, it's kind of an innocuous question, isn't it? It's kind of the sort of question that you would be used to being asked if you are a Manchester United manager. And the way that he just seems like he's lost his rag now, and it's like no. Not got no time for it and gets up and storms off. I, d I mean, look, um, a lot of United fans are very excited about Ineos, but I do think that they've 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 not started as well as they could have done. They they own the football club now. They own the footballing side, and whether Ten Hag gets the sack or not, and I think it's inev inevitable. I think they could have stepped forward a bit. You know, they could have been a little bit more visible because Ten Hag's sort of been left on his own. There's no director of football. <laughs> there's no CEO, um, and Ineos have just sort of gone very much quiet in the background, and it's sort of like this is a shit show, leave it to Ten Hag and we'll start in the summer. I don't agree with that tactic. The difference between Europa League and Conference League and no European football is massive to yeah. United fans. We take Europa League right now, Newcastle are coming for us and I just think if I was Ineos, I'd be a little bit more hands-on because you look at some of those players, they're not putting a shift in. I'd be down Carrington as Sir Jim Radcliffe saying, look, this is my club now. I want to see effort, otherwise you're gone in the summer. It's just drifting. The season's There's drifting. A couple of things I want to talk about we still need to pick apart from this. Um, first of all, Watto, I know you're not the most savviest of people when it comes to social media and technology. Um, however, Mark Goldbridge put a couple of tweets out on X at the weekend, okay? Just basically saying that Ten Hag, he, he's hung Ganacho out to dry. He's took him off at half-time, basically blaming it on the young lad where he should have a bit more credit in the bank. He's been fantastic this season and he didn't deserve to be brought off. Anyway, after the game, Garnacho or somebody in his social media team has liked the tweet, which basically means they agree with it, OK? How does that go down in a football club when you have a player almost sort of... It's almost his way of hitting back at the manager. Yeah. How does that go down? It, it's not good, is it? It's not good, to be honest with you. And irrespective of how the social media world works now, I think when, when you've got players that's a form for them to demonstrate yeah, forum, the yeah, manager, sure. you know. The manager's taking him off at half time and, and, and I, I don't like to see that from for the younger player because I always think that's an easy fix and he's hit back by by tweeting for sure. But I think there's there's certainly plenty of things wrong at Man United and the dressing room now seems to be one of them because I'll be honest with you, that were a brutal performance. Yeah. Bournemouth could have won four or five. They had chance after chance, kept dragging shots uh wider the post. Man United are wide open and you made the point about Hoyland having one chance. Man United, like any top team, should be dominating that game in possession, in control of the match. Bournemouth should be living on scraps. Man United now play living on scraps. Yeah. And the way they are actually playing because they're open, it's all about the transition. So 
maybe they think by cheating, if they do nick the ball at some point and get lucky, they can go and win a game. But there's plenty of things wrong there. And I think um, Ten Hag just looks like he's stood there waiting, waiting for the end, to be honest with you. And I think his reaction in the press conference, you've got to be better than that when you're Man United manager. Look, Man United can't drop afford to drop a point or lose a game at any time. That's what that club is. That's what uh, Sir Alex Ferguson has made that football club. And if you're managing that football club, you've got to answer the awkward questions because you're the manager of that mm. team and you've got to be able to deal with that. But there just seems to be so many things wrong in the whole environment with it. I, I'm kind of lost with it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because it's just not, there's just not a performance there. How does it work? Um, so, obviously, the second goal, um, Casemiro, he's a holding midfielder. He should be that engine, that that rat in the midfielder, the disruptor. There's somebody that breaks up all the little attacks, gets in front of people's faces. Um, the second goal, for me, is an absolute disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. He's allowed to wander into that space and get his shot off. Casemiro almost notices at the last second, meanders in, sort of hangs a leg in there. And I'm thinking, do you know what? If I was a manager of a top team like this, actually, no, sack that, a manager of any team anywhere, and my holding midfielder did that, that actual action right there and then, I would be saying, right, that'll do. You, come off. And I'll make a point of showing this in the week as well. Next week, we'll have a meeting on the Monday, and I'll show this to everybody and I'll say, right, you see that? That's an absolute disgrace. The reason why he was bought off is because you break a neck, you bust a gut, you get in front of that player, you shut it down and you block it. What you've done there is you've just allowed him to walk in, get his shot off, score a goal. Simple as that. But if you do that, then everybody's gravitating towards you and saying, you've actually made a tough call, you've made a tough decision. Yeah. He's an experienced player, he's been out there, won the lot, he's done the bit. But he's not doing it for our team. Yeah. And that's then an example to the senior pros still who are on that field. Yeah. It's an example to the young players who was in that dressing room. Look, this is what's required to be at Man United. He's taking Casemiro off here. I know I've got to be at it. You take Ganacho off when he's been the lifeblood, the fresh air yeah. in the team and playing with the freedom. And yes, could he have been in slightly better positions to help Dallo, Casemiro? All these things, yes. Did he lose the ball on the first goal when obviously the centre half makes a mistake? But yeah, but that's football. But he's been the shining light. And to make an example of him doesn't go down well with probably the majority. Where if you deal with Casemiro properly, yeah. then everybody everybody's goes, like, oh. oh. And I think, I think that's why I think Ten Hag's given up. Because when that team news came out on Saturday, I was like, Casemiro started, Rashford started. That's his prerogative. But we've seen for weeks that they're not playing well. So if he'd dropped Rashford and Casemiro on Saturday the whole fan base on social media yeah. in the ground would have gone, look at what he's done there. Yeah, Everything we would do. Yeah, I'm behind this manager. What does he do? Sticks the two players on the pitch that nobody would pick. So the fans straight away are like, well, they're not picking themselves. Yeah. It's the manager. And then he's got £55 million Mason Mount that most people want to see on the pitch. 78 minutes, he's looking behind, trying to figure out who to take off. Brings off Kobe Mainu. And you just go, yes, the players are the problem, but the manager is basically just taking all the heat off the players and yeah. putting it on himself. And you're like, why would you do that when you're hanging by a thread? And I just think maybe the 10 million payouts quite, ex you know, maybe fancies Amsterdam next year. I don't know. Oh, I'd fancy that as well. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not one who thinks you should always listen to the fans and do exactly what the fans want. If somebody wants somebody, I don't agree with that. I totally, but I think it's been so evident and so yeah, obvious this catalog season of that sometimes you have to be big and brave and go, right, you know what, I'm going to take you out because you haven't been performing. And it's as simple as that. You can say that as well in a press conference. Absolutely. Why didn't you pick him? He hasn't been performing. And that's why I, you know, I'm nothing to do with it. That's why I said his treatment of Ganacho for me was very frustrating as yeah. a fan. That yeah. was where I was coming from. Well, if a player sees it and likes it, they're obviously very frustrated in the dressing yeah. room with yeah. the same things, aren't they? So, you know, they shouldn't do it. They shouldn't but, do but it. they see everything, don't they? They see, we've got no idea. We're talking about here... The lads who we picked in the match on Saturday, and we're talking about the effort, commitment, and all that levels. But everybody else in that environment sees what's happening Monday to Friday, and you know if you don't play with your heart and soul on the Saturday, what's the training like Monday to Friday? Does this mean that Mark Goldbridge is like the voice of reason? Like this is—it was a sensible tweet, and it made sense, and people have liked it, and everybody's jumped on it and gone, "Yeah, fair enough, I totally agree." You've, you've actually spoke sense for once, mate. Yeah, and I don't think the players should do should be doing it because obviously it draws attention. But in a way, you know, Marcus Rashford was out on the piss in Belfast. Jaden Sancho um, refused to apologise and put a tweet out. Anthony's had problems. Varane's had problems. 
you know, yeah, people won't like the fact that Ganacho's liked the tweet, but you know what? As fans, sometimes when mushrooms in the dark, it's very evident that the, the, the dressing room feels the same as the fans, that they feel that there is preferential treatment, favoritism, etc. Um, so at least as fans, you you know this is probably the end because it's it's the, the players are feeling the same as the fans. What do you think? Do you think it's the end for Ten Hag? It, I think it is. I don't want it to be because I just don't want to sack another manager. I'm very stubborn, but um, I can't see a way back. The players, key players are just not turning up. What do you think, Morris? I think he's, he's likely to see the season out, but I just I can't see him starting next season. Yeah. I, I, where do you think they're going to finish? I mean, I, I don't even know where they're going to finish. I mean, they've got three very winnable games which is sometimes dangerous. You've got Coventry in the Cup, where yeah. they'll be favourites, and then they've got Burnley and Sheffield United at home, who are the two worst teams in the league. Yeah. If he wins those three games, maybe Rashford scores a few goals, you could you could almost go, oh, it's a new dawn, but we also know we've got Arsenal to come as well. Um, yeah, before we move, we're going to talk about Newcastle Spurs. I mean, New, Newcastle absolutely spanked Spurs, by the way. Um, just quickly look at Arsenal's next four fixtures. Bayern Munich away, Wolves away, Chelsea at home and Spurs away. Wow, there is four fixtures there that can define a season in an absolute nutshell. Um, let's talk about this Newcastle game then. Um, Newcastle, wow, I did not see this one coming. It's a little bit reminiscent for me of, do you remember, I think it was last season, 5-0 at half-time. 5-0 oh, yeah. at half-time, finished 6-1 in the end. Um, but this one, 4-0 to Newcastle. What are... But Spurs had the better of the game yeah. for the first 15, 20 minutes. And again, we're talking about that centre-forward being able to score a goal. Um, they need Timo a Harry Kane, don't they? Yeah. They need a Harry Kane. Did he used to play for them? <laughs> Um, Timo Werner, you know, obviously they brought him in in January and he missed a couple of really big chances again. And they play the way they play. They're a very open team, expansive going forward, create chance after chance, but they're not killers in that forward area. And then all of a sudden, we know how they defend, don't we? And Isaac, well, I mean, fantastic. But you're in one-on-one situations, clearing, clearing balls. I actually thought for the first goal, for for how bad everything was. Romero, for an experienced defender, mm. he speeded the play up for him yeah. and he's forced him to play the pass inside him. If he'd have just stood there, he could have got back. But as he's committed in, he just let him play inside him. Yeah. And I thought that and naive. But look, and then he uh, he obviously sits him on his backside. And I felt I felt a little bit for Mickey it, van der Ven. There's a couple it, of pictures it, it, going around on the internet. That, of it. He had a bad game. He, he's, he's sort of curled up in a pretzel on a few of them. One of them, he's on the floor sort of screaming. Um, but, but that's where I think his partner's not, yeah, not helped him out. out. He's yeah. forced him. Yeah. He's, he, he, at that point, you don't speed up the game for the opposition. You slow the game down yeah. for him. Yeah. And uh, as soon as he's played inside him, and then he's trying to get back, and it's very difficult. He steps inside, and it's a good finish. Is this, this is a bit of a worry for Spurs, because I think think a few, few weeks ago, they got beat by Fulham 3-0, out of nowhere. Yesterday, they got beat 4-0 by Newcastle. Kind of, not out of nowhere, but this has to be a little bit of a worry for Spurs. Somebody who are trying to sort of break into that sort of top four places of the Premier League, isn't it? Well, I think Ange has done a great job and he's had the plaudits, but I think also some of the criticism has been that they're a bit one-dimensional. Yeah. Um, you can definitely counter them. And Newcastle had 30% possession at St. James's Park and they won 4-0. Won four nil. So that is Eddie Howe has, has done Ange big time there. And I think that, yeah, they, they, they're, they're very similar up front. Son... He took him off after 57 minutes. I mean, I'd applaud that. Yeah. That's something Ten Hag never yeah. does. You know, he, yeah. you know, he obviously said, you're my captain, you're not performing, get off the pitch. So I, I, I like Ange for doing that. And it was one of those days. And Van der Ven will never have a game like that again. He's a brilliant signing. But, you know, Madison's not the player he was before the injury. So they've, they've got a few problems, but they're, they're a much stronger team than yeah. Newcastle. They've got a better bench. But Johnson, Werner, like Watto says, Son, they're all, Kulisevsky, they're all very, they're all wingers, really. Yeah. They, they haven't got a striker. And, you look at Newcastle and the last two games they've won. They've not conceded a goal. They've been to Fulham and won. They beat Spurs, six points, 30% possession in both games. And what Eddie Howe's done with an injury crisis is gone, we're going to sit in, we're yeah. going to be compact and we're going to use our good players on the break. It's took six points. It's Maybe Ten Hag should have a look at that because it's like, you, you know, you can just go, we're going to be really boring but we're going to win. It's amazing. And, when, and he'll probably end up in Europe. When you've got somebody who can put the ball in the back of the net, like an Isaac, who is so electrically fast, it suits that. Do it. Just exactly do that. There's so many teams try and reinvent the wheel sometimes and walk the ball in the back of the net. The interesting thing about Isaac, though, is I think he's got very Thierry Henry type. He models his game on yeah, Henry. Like he's not it. Henry. Yeah. Um, would you class him as a £100 million player? Because that's what it's going to take to get him out of Newcastle. Um, I probably would. 
Yeah, I probably would. If, if, I, if, if Isaac played for my football club in the Premier League, watching him week in, week out do what he does, I would not sell him for less than 100 million quid because there's not, there's not that many out and out strikers that know how to put the ball in the back of the net with his pace as well. And I think he's only getting better as well. I, th I remember when they signed him actually a couple of years back and I remember looking at him and thinking, you're a little bit slight. You're a little bit too sort of skinny. You look to me like you're going to pick up injuries. Look to me like you're going to get bullied a little bit. And at first, I think he found it a little bit difficult. But the way that he's progressed over the last couple of seasons, I think he looks bigger, looks bulkier, stronger, faster, reads the game better. For sure, 100, I ain't selling him for 100, less than 100 million quid. No chance on this earth. Man United would love to have a player like him. There's so many players. So would Arsenal. Arsenal, Liverpool, teams that would be crying out for a player like Isaac. Spurs. Spurs would love an Isaac as well. I don't think anybody could afford him, that's the thing. 100 million quid at least. Castle, yeah. 100 million quid at least. I've got, a, uh, I've got a question for Luke, our editor. So Luke is a big Spurs fan. Uh, Luke, would you take, go back to Conte, Mourinho, them sort of managers, and you're competing for top one or two in the Premier League, yeah? But it's kind of boring football. You know what it is. It's not, you know, it's not something that you're going to get up for. Or are you taking it today? Ange ball. I'll take the exciting brand of football. Really? You'd still rather have this and that? Well, they, well, they never win anything, do they? So they may as well be enjoyed. But, yeah, so, so there, that's They never what win it, whatever happens, so it don't matter. I, I, I agree. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with Luke, though. I think they are a... They are, they are like the Spurs of the past. When yeah. I think about Spurs under Redknapp and, and anybody else, it's always been about, even Venables days, it's, they've always been entertaining. Yeah. I think yeah. they've found their identity again. But, yeah, the, 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 the thing for them is it'll be a good season if they finish fifth yeah. compared to where we thought. But next season is going to be the big one because that's the honeymoon's over then, isn't it? Yeah, it's like where, where they're going to be. Right, we're going to talk about the relegation battle in a minute, lads. I really want to have a little bit of chat, though, about fourth and fifth and who's going to get it out of Spurs and... Uh, Villa, because we've got the fixtures in front of us here. Spurs' next fixtures are absolutely brutal. So, uh, starts with the North London derby, home to Spurs, and then it's Chelsea away, Liverpool away. Again, they should win at home to Burnley, and then it's home to Man City. Um, whereas you look at Villa's, and they're not actually too bad, are they? Home to Bournemouth, home to Chelsea, away at Brighton, home to Liverpool, and away at Palace, the last game of the season. Um, Villa already three points ahead. You would... You would expect Villa to get fourth, right? Two wins and they'll do it, yeah. You reckon, yeah. 69, I can't see. Spurs have got six left. They've got a game in hand, Spurs, so they can they can match Villa if they win their next game, which is the North London derby. I can't um, see them getting three wins, to be honest. So. Oh, I think Villa three wins. If they get to 72 points... It should be Spurs, Villa. Spurs have got... Well, they'd, they'd have to win. They've got to do the lot, really. Yeah, they've got to beat all the big boys to... to put to, Villa under pressure. What a, what a season from Aston Villa. Well done, you. I think Villa could get in there in fourth oh. and actually win the Europa thing as well. The, th the thing is, what as well, though, then. we all said all season long that we should be able to get five places for Champions League this year. It's not so likely now, is it? If Arsenal lose against Bayern Munich on Wednesday night, then it looks likely that Germany will be that team that get the extra Champions League space. We need space. two to come through this week, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. Liverpool, Ar Liverpool Arsenal, uh, West, West Ham, Ham and City. Yeah. And they Oof. could all go. Oof. I mean, I love City to go. This is, so this is massive. <laughs> this is a massive little run in. You hate Man City, you do. Right, relegation battle, lads. Um, right, start here. Who's going down? Simple as that. Who's going down? Sheffield United, guaranteed. Uh, honestly, though, if Burnley would have held on to that win, if they could have just held on for a few minutes more, they would have had a little shout as well. Yeah, I, I just think they've had so many near misses, Burnley, in the last six, eight matches. Yeah. And to concede a goal like that, look, he'll never do that ever again. It's it's just a, a total lapse of concentration. He's not even getting pressed. I think mean, Brighton. I mean, it's just a point from nowhere. He's too busy thinking about what he's going to do with the ball, isn't Absolutely. he? Absolutely. He's too busy thinking when I get this ball under control, I'm, I'm going to pass it out this. to there, and then, oh my god, the ball's gone in the back of the net. It's yeah, it's one of the craziest goals because it's not even hit yeah. hard at him. He's just had a, a real lapse there. But I think that one moment summed up Burnley's whole season. Yeah. They've been so close, but yet they're going to be miles off it yeah. in reality. I think um, the last place will be between Forest and Luton. And actually, Luton have got three real good fixtures at home. And I can see them putting Forest under massive, massive pressure. And I think Forest not holding on to that win, yeah. and conceding another set piece. I think the stats are that they are the worst team in the league for defending set plays. And that could well just be the factor that takes them down. There you go. It goes to show how important set pieces are. That's why all these 
oh, teens now with all this fashionable new set piece coach, but defending it and not letting so many set pieces in, it's massive, man. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I agree with Otto. I think that uh, Forrest have got the much more difficult run in. Yeah. Luton have got three winnable games at home. Um, I, I think that, you know, as much as we go on about the Premier League, it's probably in danger of being really boring. Man yeah. City are going to win the league and the three promoted teams come up and go down. But I think Forest are going to go down. Um, be interesting if they go down by the points deducted because you know, obviously that opens up a bit of a, uh, a situation. But I think Luton deserve it. Yeah. You know, I, th I do think they're a bit of a hipster sort of supported team because everyone sort of champions them and wants them to stay up. Um, but it'd be nice for them to stay up. I think they've, they've played the better football and I think that's how I judge it. So it's in their hands. You know, they fought for it. It's in their hands. Unless Forest start getting results against Man City at home and stuff, which you don't think, I think no. it'll be Luton. I, um, considering I played for Watford, I shouldn't say this, but I have really enjoyed watching Luton this season. They're always in a game. They'll always give it a go. And I think that, on its own, means that they should be the team that stay up. And we'll see. It's always interesting come the end of the season, you get some weird and wonderful results. Um, we've got to talk about uh, what's going on in Germany. Um, <clears throat> How sorry Harry Kane's going how, on in Germany. How That's sorry do we feel for Harry Kane, lads? You know not, what I mean? Not, not at all. Not at all, yeah. Richest guy, rich, 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 rich. But and, he, he uh, deserves to win something. The guy the needs Euros. to win something. He's going to win the Euros. Oh, you're getting carried Only away Southgate there. can stop him. You are getting carried away. Yeah. That's, that should be the banners. Every, you know when we're driving around the summer, all the billboards, only Southgate can stop him. Do it the for Harry. picture of him in his waistcoat. Um, Do it for Harry. So, Bayer Leverkusen at the weekend. Um, one, I think they absolutely battered somebody 5-0, didn't they? 6-0. 6-0. Uh, um, they've won the, the Bundesliga um, the first time in 11 years Bayern Munich haven't won it Harry Kane signs in the summer obviously he's just going there to strengthen them and win an X amount more and Bayer Leverkusen go and do it but what an achievement for Bayer Leverkusen though the whole season undefeated well looking at the stats here no, and no team's ever gone the full Bundesliga season without losing they've, got five, they've won it with five games to spare I think the the momentum and everything they've got at the minute is is phenomenal. I think uh, last week or the week before they were losing at home, come the 90th minute yeah. and one two one. Yeah. Um, it's like the Man United of old, um, and obviously everybody's talking about Alonso. Has he made the right decision if he's committed to them again for next year? Um, <laughs> Mark's, it, Mark's not um, shaking his head. Well, look, we all we 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 gonna give them. Massive credit. Hopefully, they go the full season unbeaten. But the Premier League's the place to be. And if he wants to showcase that he is Top. a manager with undoubted quality, he has to come and challenge himself. What do you make of uh, Xavi Alonso pledging his future to Bayer? I think he's placed his future to Real Madrid. I think <clears throat> Ancelotti's there for one more year, and Real Madrid have gone. Wait a year. We want you. I, I don't think he's pledging his future to Leverkusen. I think he's, you know, he'd be a fool to stay at Leverkusen when you've got Bayern Munich and Liverpool who want you. I think Real Madrid is a former club of his and they've said, in a year's time, we want you. And he said, that, Is that a you. risky game to play, though? Because well, Klopp, the, Real, Klopp might say next April, I want to come back, and Real Madrid might go, sorry, I, I will go for them. Do you know what I mean? When you've got Liverpool on the table, good to go, I think that's a risky game to play to say, no, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to, I'm going to give it a year and then I'm going to go to Real Madrid. If he has a bad season next year with Bayer Leverkusen and they get off to an absolute stinker, his stock goes well, down. What, 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 what's he going to do at Leverkusen? Like Bayern Munich will come back, yeah, for sure. so he's not going to win the league by that much. If he does, it'll be tough. Um, Champions League football, big tournament, doesn't have a big squad. I mean, next season's going to be a drop off. I'd be stunned if it's not. Yeah. So the only reason you do it is because you've got something lined up. Because I like you, it. So yeah. that's what it is. I like it. You heard it here first. Um, Xavi Alonso is going to, to Real, Real Madrid. Madrid. Simple as that. Done and dusted. Um, before we get onto the quiz, um, we've got to talk about the new um, technology that's hopefully going to be getting implemented in the Premier League next season. Um, Semi automated offsides. We need this, don't we, lads? We need this. Champions League coverage, you see it straight away. It's instant, it's so much quicker. Apparently, there's a stat that says it's going to shave 30 seconds off every single offside check, which is only a good thing, isn't it? Wyatt? I think, I think when, when, when we've all been fortunate enough to go and watch live football this year, I think we need VAR to be over and done with as quickly as is possible yeah. on making the decisions because football's all about the fan experience. And I've been at three or four games this year where VAR has definitely taken the sting out of the whole experience yeah. as a fan, whether it went for you or against you. I think if they can cut 30 seconds off or less, you know, or more, sorry, that would be an amazing thing. But we have to do something because I think we, we, we're taking far too long on the decisions. And we're what? not getting them all right. Why is it not coming in till September or November? Like? <laughs> 
It's already right. being used in the Champions League, yeah? yeah? So they know how to use it. It's like, just bring that supercomputer to the Premier League and stick it in the stadium and surely they can make it work. Still but downloaded. No, they'll be... Got crap into that. <laughs> They've got dial-up still from no, the I, th I think it can cause problems, that, because yeah. it should be a whole season. <laughs> yes. Because whatever happens to whichever team in that first two or three months, yeah. you're always going to be then saying, well, if we'd have had this, it either is come the first game in August yeah. or it isn't. I, I can't see that you introduce something midway through. It just doesn't make any sense. I think they've got. I think next season they've got, to, when we look at this season, we know the goalkeepers before Christmas were getting fouls and then yeah. straight after they stopped it. Yeah. Uh, the handball rule. I think the, the, the PGMOL this summer should be working double time to go, Right, we want consistency on red cards, we want consistency on handballs. We want the biggest thing we've lost this season is the ability for a fan to watch the game and know what's going on. Yeah. And 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 and, and they've let that go. And you know, like the Bournemouth handball, I didn't think it was, but then I don't know the handball rule anymore. Yeah. I don't know what's a red card anymore. So look, this is a positive step, but they've they've got a the, the it's so simple. Just let the fans be able to referee a game because yeah. that's what we want to do. And the only way you're going to do that is have consistency. So it's a step in the right direction, but I don't know why we can't have it from August. Because it'll be something to do with contracts and money and red tape and laws, and that'll be all it is. Yeah. Premier League is the best, apparently, but we haven't even got the best technology. Uh, quiz time, lads. We good to go? Yeah. Good. Come on. Stop it. OK, Jamie, are you ready with your ten questions? Yep, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? We are good to go. Yeah. Mate. Question one. Which team is the only team to withdraw from the FA Cup when Man they're reigning champions? Manchester United. Because of the Club World Cup. <sighs> yeah, I was about to say it, yeah. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine doing that nowadays? Pulling out of the FA Cup well, so you can go and compete in the Club World Cup? You, you wouldn't survive, would you? It wasn't Man United, Pathetic, isn't it? You were forced to do it. One Politi ben. Politics. Politics. Question two. Which Portuguese midfielder joined Manchester City from Monaco? Silva. Bernardo. 2017, Bernardo Silva. Oh, Monaco? Yep, I didn't 50 know that. million euros. Did not know that. Yes. I could have been a bit slower though, didn't I? Really? Yeah, I need to wake up here, come yeah, on. I thought you'd been up at three o'clock reading your bloody Footballer's Digest or whatever. Or just tapping into James for the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. Which team in the Premier League has the least amount of players being called up to their national Luton. team this season? No, not Luton. Sheffield United. Sheffield United. <laughs> Sheffield United have got four, and I'm pretty sure Luton have got six. Ah, oh, so going with the shittest, yeah. It's got to be one of them, man. <laughs> Sorry, Sheffield United. They would admit it. Two, one, nil. Question four. The Buckinghamshire derby is between MK Dons and Luton. Other club. No. Ooh. Reading. No. The Buckingham Buckinghamshire derby is between MK Dons and what other club? Oh, that's quite tough, that. Well, we've had a go. Come on. Who, who's it? Say again. The Buckinghamshire derby MK is between Dons. MK Dons and what other club? Buckinghamshire. Bloody hell. Five. I'm struggling for what where the, the, the catchment area. Wickham. Can I give the answer? Wickham's the correct yeah. answer. Oh. Wickham you did wonders. well, you did well. I do know a couple. You did, you did well. I do know a couple you kind of well. Buckinghamshire. You did well to pull that out of that. <coughs> yeah. Two, two, now. Question five. In the 2005-06 Premier League season, who was Blackburn's number one goalkeeper? Friedel. Flowers. Brad Friedel was the correct answer. Friedel and Flowers. <laughs> oh, I know what was going on here again. Can I have the list of who's coming on the podcast <laughs> for, next, for next week's quiz? <laughs> or who's been on the podcast in the last 10 weeks? Yeah, we've got Brad Friedel on the podcast tomorrow, by the way, everybody. Yeah. I love Brad Friedel. What a man. Exclusive. What a man. Question six. Career path. Give it to Ben. Come on, Ben. Come on. I have played for St Etienne B, St Etienne, Arsenal, St Etienne. Saliba. Saliba is oh, the correct answer. Look at this. <sighs> I, won't, I won't get in that. He was obviously French. I'd say so. <laughs> I don't think of anyone else. St Etienne, St Etienne, St Etienne, St Etienne. Yeah, we actually went to Arsenal that went back. Went back on loan, yeah. yeah. That's where he cut his teeth, Jamie. I think he went on loan somewhere else as well, Arsenal fans, whatever. Right? He did. Another he did. French. Marseille? Group. Marseille, yeah. And then back to Tetris. You should get a point for that. <laughs> no point, unfortunately. Three, two, Keep the ref in. One. Question seven. Coventry have reached the FA Cup semi-finals and it's a second season and it's second season in a row that a championship side has reached the last four. But which other championship side made the semis last season? 
Middlesbrough. No. I don't know. I know. I know. It was in the final. It was. It was. Ch- uh, Chelsea. Who was in the final last year? Man United, and, Man United and Man City. Which remember. other championship side made the semi-finals of the FA Cup? Last years, I bet Man United season. played someone in the semi-final last year. I fucking don't know. I'm too old for this. Five, four. Sheffield United. Sheffield United's correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'm just thinking of the good ones. They got promoted. Was it against Man United. It was against Man City, oh, and they, and they lost three 0 in the semis. Yeah. Oh, oh, you yeah, take three 0 They had a couple of lads on loan who couldn't play, didn't they? I yeah. yeah. You yeah. take a three 0 in the semi final against Man City. He's guessed his way to this. He has. He's got What's the score? Educated three, three. guess. Educated oh guesses. God. All right. God. It's like Man City at the Bernabeu last week. He's just smacking in. Oh, hopeful, yeah, hopeful efforts screamers. from nowhere. You don't take a shot, you ain't going to score. Yeah. That is true. 3-3. Three, three. One. One. <laughs> Question eight. Which club has the nickname of the Terriers? Huddersfield Town. Huddersfield Town is the correct answer. I didn't know, that. I didn't know it. it. I didn't know I knew know it'd be that. Northern with Terriers. <laughs> didn't know it. I was going to say Barnsley, but they're the Tykes. Tykes, yeah. Tykes, Tykes. Yeah. I know, I missed You're it last week. Business. I know, I'm normally good at them. He spent so much time in the lower league. Can, can, yeah, can you do another one of them? Yeah. Just give me a chance. <laughs> three, three, two. Oh, it'd be three, good if I can pull one out here. Yeah. Come on. Question nine. Two questions left. Which former Argentina, Chile, Lazio and Leeds... Pellegrino. Pellegrino. No. Oh. Yes, it's all fuzzies. Right, start again. Yeah. Start again. Start again. Just woo that, yeah? I know it anyway. Now. Which former Argentina, Chile, Lazio, Leeds manager, just to name a few... It's currently managers Uruguay. I know it. Do you know what this question is like? <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know that question on who wants to be a millionaire? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get it right this uh, time. Bielsa. Bielsa's the question. Oh, <laughs> my God. God. Well done, redeemed yourself. <laughs> I need to keep quiet here. <laughs> if I had said Pellegrini at the same time, I'd have got it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Question 10. Final question. Argentina. Our joint top with 15 Copa Americas, but who is the other nation who's also won? Brazil. Team? No. What? Brazil. And I would have said that. That's why Brazil I didn't say it. Brazil won nine. Copa Americas, yeah. 15 wins. Yeah. Um, joint with Argentina. I'm gonna just gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna go. I, I don't know. I'm just gonna have to go with Uruguay. Uruguay is the correct oh! answer. <laughs> they were very good in the World Cups. Yep. You could have got involved in that, you I, know. I couldn't get involved. You could have asked. That. You I could forgot have why I was in it. No, I, could, I couldn't get involved. He's, he he wants you I'm to out. get the right answer. I'm out. Rubbish. I'm out. Shit, I I'm really out. took the out of it. I forgot I'm out. out. If what I would have got in with Uruguay, I'd have killed Just myself. Before, yeah. Not killed myself, literally. I'd have <laughs> yeah. kicked myself. In a quiz sense, I'd have been suicidal. But. <laughs> Just leave I it, forgot, all right? We get it, we get it, all right? <laughs> I'd have said Mexico just to make it interesting. I didn't realise what I was still in it. I'm there taking yeah. my time. If you'd gone Uruguay, I'd have been like, no, the guy who's looking at the last piece of cake. Staying quiet for you. So this goes to a tiebreaker, yeah? yeah. Tiebreaker question. Oh, I win this. The, the, this time it's just me and Mark. It's not him, no? No, what's that? All right, I didn't time. play the last question, did I? I know you didn't. But you were involved, you know that, yeah? You could have answered it. Question 11, tiebreaker question. Who is the highest scoring Brazilian in the Premier League history? Who is the highest scoring Brazilian Firmino. in Premier League history? And Roberto Firmino is the correct answer. Yes! Come on, you beauty! <laughs> He's got 82 goals. Yeah, I've heard that question before somewhere, but I second guess myself for some reason or something, but buzzing my tree. That, that was going to be my guess, yeah. but I didn't want to guess it because I knew who it was if it wasn't him. So who was it? Would it have been? I would have, I would have had more of a think about it. Ah, get in there. Is it? Um, can we quickly update was, the, the, the quiz Jesus scores, please? Thinking, um, so, as it stands, Fozzie on 11, Ooh, Mark on 9, Watto is on 6, and then we've got some also runs that you're going to have no chance compete, whatsoever. You can't compete when he's whacking in world. He's like Wickham. I've done really one. well today. I've done really yeah, well today. Answered some good questions. Might have been my best performance ever. Yeah. Well, last week's were your worst, so... Prime Fozzie is what it was, all right? Prime Fozzie. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Watto... Goldbridge, incredible. Nice to see you all. Next week.